we're just gonna go ahead and get started. Um, where stuff is like one of my favorite things to do, and maybe that's because I like to balance on my hands a lot, but um, it also is just like having strong wrists. It's just so awesome um, for like wrist pain, um, having strong elbows, so sports you love, and shoulders. There's so many like muscles going on here that it's just really great if we can like strengthen them and take them through their full range of motion. I don't know if you want to add anything about that. I could ramble on about how I love shoulder stuff, but I won't bore, <laughs> bore me with that. Yeah, deep dives too into like grip strength when you're going up through your, um, through your forearms and then shoulders have such a big range of motion. So if we kind of neglect them or don't use that full range of motion, we can get a lot of instability or pain or like, injuries and things like that. So yeah, it's good to keep in mind. All right. So... We're going to go ahead and we're going to present a few options to you. So Lauren will be doing a breast variation at the um, wall. I'm just going to turn everybody on mute for in a momento. <coughs> okay. So I'm going to do the option on the ground. So I'll be coming back here and Lauren will be at the wall. So when we are bearing weight on our hands, Make sure that your hands have some space in between the fingers. So I see a lot of people will just bear weight like this. Make it wide. <laughs> okay? So keep space between the hands. And I'm going to come into a tabletop position and Lauren will come with her wrist in line with her shoulders at the wall. Um, and the first thing that we are going to do here are called forearm lifts. And this is the bang for your buck if you want to strengthen your wrist, if you have weak wrists. So what we'll be doing is I'll just demo for a second. My index fingers are pointing forwards. I'm bearing weight at the heel of my hand, mid palm and fingertips. And I'm going to lift up to mid palm, keeping the arm straight. So I'm gonna lift up, remove a little bit further so you can see me. So you'll notice that my mid palm is connected. My heel of the hand and my palm is off of the ground. And then with control, I pump the heel of my hand towards the ground, no bend in the elbows. So if you are on your hands and knees, if it's um, a little bit challenging, you can walk the knees closer to take some load off. If you want to make it more challenging, it's just shifting shoulders a little bit past the wrist and knees a little bit further behind the hips. But let's stick to tabletop today. So we're going to do nine more of those. We're going to lift up to the mid palm, keep the arms straight, and then pump the heel of the hand down. Smooth and steady. And I want you to be mindful that you're not lifting with your shoulders, like shrugging them up towards your ears. It's a pushing into the ground, lifting the heel of the hand up, and then coming back down. Let's go for five, four, three, two, one, and then you can go ahead and give your hands a shake for a second. So just do some spontaneous movement with that. Okay, yeah, so that's one way that we can lift off. Now we're going to start to do that on an angle. So we did lifting mid palm straight up, straight down. Now I want you to focus on lifting up and it'll be through the index and towards the thumbs, so towards the inside of the hand. So starting off in that same position again, we're going to lift up, and now your weight is at the mound of the index finger, and a little bit of weight on your thumb pad, but not a lot. I know that's kind of hard to see at this angle, but we're gonna do 10 of those. So lifting up to the index finger, mound, and the pad of the thumb for 10. Keep the arms straight, and try to be going steady up, steady down. Forearms will likely start to feel the burn at some point doing this. For two, so finishing 10 at this angle. And then you can rest, go ahead and shake it out. Sometimes I like to give my forearms just a little bit of a squeeze. 
squeeze and a twist. And now we're going to do a lift off and that'll be towards the ring finger and pinky finger. So we went straight up and forwards, inwards, and now we're going to go outwards for 10 repetitions. So hands down again, shoulders over top of the wrist. And now we lift up. And you might not be able to go as high up as you were for the last few. Just depends how tight your palm is, how tight the fascia and connective tissue is there. For five, four, three, two, one. Take a pause again. You can like roll out the forearms if you need to. I generally start to, I start there. And then if you want to continue to build strength, go for 20 continuous reps each way. So if you needed to pause in between each 20 reps, you can do that. But I would try to just complete all of those reps in one go, but you have to work your way up to get there a bit. Um, so now we've moved the wrist in that way. We're going to start to bear weight on the back of the wrist, which can be so sensory rich if we don't do this. So again, if you've never placed weight at the back of your palm, I would start this one at a wall. <laughs> Um, and if the wall is just really sensory rich because your hands are bony, you could always place a towel or you could even stick your hands in socks. That can be something that would work. So we're just going to go ahead Then you'll have your fingertips facing your hands. So we'll start with one arm. Now it might be really bent or you might be able to straighten it. And you can start with one hand if that's a lot or if you want to explore, you're going to bear weight on the back of both wrists. And then checking with the breath here, we're gonna hold here for just a little bit. And let's keep holding. Keep the arms straight for five, four, three, two, one. Ease off. Go ahead. Give the hand a shake. So it can feel a little bit sticky. The fascia there, hard to move. That's okay. It will get easier over time if you do these. Now we're just going to focus on one hand I'm going to turn towards you. Um, but this again can be done right at the wall. So I'm going to start with my left hand, connect the back of my left hand to the ground. I can use my right hand for a bit of support. I'm going to see, could I get that left arm straight? So this would be level one, left arm becoming straight. Level two, we're going to take the right hand, place it underneath of your fingers and see if you can invite those fingers towards your wrist. So you're gonna fold them over. Still keeping the arm straight, so that would be level two. Level three, if this feels okay, if you're not holding your breath, you start to do a circle around and just get some movement in there. And then go the opposite way. And then we come to a pause, slowly uncurl the hand, give it a shake up. For these ones, just really taking your time. If you don't quite have the straight arm, there's no need to hop ahead. Just work with what you have today. So let's bring the right back of the hand to the ground. Try to get the arm straight so the eye and the elbow facing forwards, if that's possible, or up towards the ceiling if you're on the wall. Level one, holding here. Level two, left hand 
We'll assist the right fingertips in the direction of your wrist. So that's level two and level three is starting to add those circles. And then let's go the opposite way. Okay, slowly uncurl. Give that hand a shake. You can flip the fingers as if you're flicking water off of the hands. And then like just some spontaneous movement. And last thing I like to do for a stretch for the hand is just in any seated position. I'm going to bring my right hand by my side. You can do this from kneeling too. And as if I'm not going to actually move, but as if I was like to flick my hands forward because it's a splash through the water, but I don't move my hands. And then I also pull my thumb towards the back wall. And you might feel that stretch in your palm up your forearm to your shoulder, just depending on how straight your arm is. Especially if you have a job that's like requiring you to always hold on to something. I know this is one of my favorite stretches when I was a server um, and always like pouring beer and then passing <laughs> glasses, my hand would become so tight. So if you have a job like that, this one is really nice. Shake up that hand, and we'll go ahead and do the other side. So fingertips to the ground as if you were to flip away, but we don't actually. And then pull the thumb towards the back wall. Okay, let's let that go, shake it out. We're going to do one last one actually for the wrist. I could, I could go on about the wrist all day, but I'll do one more of my favorite one just to gain a little bit of flexibility. We're gonna start with the fingertips flip towards the knees. And yeah, so you can just do that same thing at a wall. Now, I'm going to keep my right hand as it is and I'm gonna make a thumbs up side with my left hand. And I place my thumbs up side right where I think my elbow would go if I were to bend it. So as I peel my right heel of the hand off the ground, I'm going to bend or pull my elbow towards that thumbs up side. And as I continue to pull, my mid palm comes up and now I'm just on my fingertips. So just having the fingertips connected to the ground. And then I slowly roll that heel of the hand towards the ground. So if that was challenging, Stick with that one. If you want a little bit more, you can make a fist. Place the fist underneath your elbow. Then we start to roll up the palm, coming to just the fingertips and seeing could we connect that elbow to the fist. And then slowly release. <laughs> We're gonna shake out that hand and try that on the other side. So fingertips down, thumbs up side with the right hand. Slowly start to peel the heel of the hand, mid palm, bending at the elbow, seeing what's possible. And slowly roll down. So you can take that variation again, or just make a fist. Stick the fist towards the ground, and slowly roll elbow towards that fist. And then shake it out. Those are some of my favorite wrist um, strengtheners, flexibility, soft tissue work. Now we're going to head up the arm to the elbows. So again, you can do this at the wall or at the ground. I'm just gonna stick both my hands on the ground and now we know when we do have our hands on the ground, we are having space between each finger. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bend my elbows back, 
flare them off to the side and then push the ground away and wrap the elbow around. So let's try 10 repetitions, elbows back to the side and push. And you can get as low to the ground as you want. Really start to tune into how your elbows are feeling, how they're moving your space. And once you finish 10 quality repetitions, we go the other way. So that would be elbows out to the side, send them back, wrap them around and push up. Then you can go as low to the ground as you want, or if you need to stay up a little bit higher, you stay there. Do just two more repetitions. Good. And then shake it out. Now we can all do this one from standing. We're going to come into elbow controlled articular rotation. So if you came to the last movement mini, we did the controlled articular rotations or cars for short at the cervical and thoracic and lumbar spine. Now we're going to do the same thing for our elbows. So my head's kind of missing, that's fine. What we're gonna do is start with our palms <laughs> facing forwards, elbows pinched in towards your sides. And I want you to imagine you moving through a bit of resistance. So I'm gonna keep the shoulders away from my ears. I'm gonna pull my palms towards my shoulder heads and then rotate the palms away. Push down and you work through about 10 to 30% resistance. And then rotate the palms up, pull towards the shoulder heads. Rotate away, push down. And slow it down, kind of moving with your breath, exploring that full range of motion. Okay, we'll do one more in this direction, and then we just go the opposite way. So the opposite way, now we'll have the palms facing the ground. You're gonna pull the back of your hand towards your shoulders. Rotate palm towards your shoulder heads and extend through the arms. Down, pull back. Try to get the elbow as straight as you can. And we're also looking to move within a pain-free range of motion. So if you notice you get to a certain point and it starts to elicit a pain response in the body, maybe just stopping short of that the next time you complete a repetition. Let's do one more, so we'll just finish off this and head to our last one and that'll be the shoulders. And these are shoulder cars. So two options here, you can work with a wall and that or you can just work with a hand on your belly or you can actually marry those two together. So I like to have my thumb in my cycloid process right in between the rib cage and my pinky facing towards the pelvis. And this just gives me some um, feedback on where my spine is in space as I move through my shoulder. So if you don't have a wall, don't worry about it. 
what I'm gonna do is I have my right palm facing forwards and I'm gonna reach forward into protraction. So I'm really reaching forward as if I could take a hold of something. And then I come up overhead. Now being mindful and elevate the shoulders. So really reach up, Lauren, I'll show you. We're going to flip the palm away from us and then start to reach back as if somebody was to pass you something. And then depress the shoulder all the way down. And we're gonna reach all the way up. Turn the palm out and then keep internally rotating as you reach back and down. Let's do three more repetitions, nice and slow, but exploring where are your sticking points? Is there a spot where you're holding your breath or where the hips turn it out? Um, and if you're hearing any crunching or crackling, that's okay. <laughs> as long as, again, it doesn't feel really painful. Just keep moving through this whole range of motion. Ooh, once you've completed five, we just do that in the opposite direction. So your palm will be facing back. You push back. Push, 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 and then slowly unravel the arm as you come up and over. Protract. And then through depression, four more. The reaching back into extension can be a fairly challenging position as we don't often stick a lot of that in our day-to-day -day lives. So that can be a challenging spot for some of us. We'll do one more and then we'll explore that movement. Five repetitions on each side. You need the hands to shake if you want. So it can be hand to belly, <clears throat> palm facing forwards, and let's do five repetitions through protraction, elevation of the shoulder, retraction, there we go, <laughs> and then depression. <laughs> I'm like getting stabbed by the snake plant. Should not have put that there. <laughs> and then let's go the opposite way. So five repetitions. Last one. And we'll let that go from there. So that is something I take a few of those movements and I usually do those every day. There's really, you can't really do too much of those. I'm sure there's a rule breaker in there somewhere, <laughs> but. <laughs> 24 hour marriage. Yeah, 24 hour marriage on a shoulder card. <laughs> that would be awesome. Yeah.